It's so multifaceted, and uh, it's, it's just no one particular direction you would want to go. And, uh, but uh, to be safe, I decided to write something down <laughs> because I couldn't trust me <laughs> which way I would go. And so it goes like this. So to start with, I just want to take time to thank Jacob himself, his wife Gladys, the children Taunga Chimfembe and Pumulani, for honoring me to say something on this special occasion. And um, like we can all see, it's really indeed a special occasion and a special milestone in the life of uh, my... He seems to be just a friend now. Now It's more like a brother to me, Jacob. I would also like to welcome all of you and thank you all for coming to witness this special milestone occasion and celebrate with the Sakalas. I realize some have had to travel a very long way to get here from different parts of this country and I've been realized there are people who have traveled from abroad to be here and some people may still be suffering from jet lag. <laughs> But you made it to this place. I just want to thank you that you made it to this place and you, you've made this evening the way it's turned out to be. I met Jacob in 1989 at the nursing school, like um, somebody just mentioned. We were young boys then and uh, I remember the first day we, we came across each other with Jacob, very talkative chap, and, you know, he just went on and went on, and he was a bit too talkative for my liking, because he was, you know, those who knew me that time knew how quiet I was, and uh, I just saw this chap, and he had come from Kitwe, but along the way I discovered we had this, a, a lot of common ground. He knew certain people that I knew. One of these people was his... Uh, Cousin Madaliso, whom I'd known through CBU in Kitwe. So from there, we sat, uh, I thought, well, but as time went on, we turned out to be very good friends. I was a born again Christian then, and he wasn't. He was totally an opposite of what I was like. And, uh, you know, in those days, if you were born again, you know, for some reason, you were not expected to associate so much with people whom you didn't think were born again. But for some reason, we just struck a chord when I met that chap, and uh, we became friends, and um, with time we got more and more close, and I started knowing Jacob. Um, along the way, Like I've mentioned earlier, we became so close and um, I started learning a few things from Jacob and uh, the few things started challenging even my own Christian life, you know, some of the things that I saw. Jacob has got such a big heart and uh, he easily made friends with almost everybody. I remember when we went to the nursing school, just in the first year, he almost knew almost everybody. In the third years, he knew, you know, he knew doctors on the wards, he knew other nurses, you know, the cooks in the kitchen. And, uh, you know, before going to sleep, we, we, had, we had this habit of, you know, making some hot chocolate drink and so on. And uh, through his connection with the cooks, you know, Jacob. <laughs> Uh, seem to have a very good stock of chocolate. <laughs> if you needed sugar or you needed anything, you, know, you ju just went to, to Jacob and he'll have it. <laughs> so, that was the kind of person Jacob was. He has a very big heart and has always been challenging me in his ability to accommodate others. And also in, in his ability to just get along with others and, you know, to forgive, you know. I was that type of person, you know, when uh, we disagreed the previous day, you know. Tomorrow when we woke up, you know, I didn't want to speak to you. That was the kind of person I was. 
you know, we would argue with Jack Mo with Jacob over something, and you know, sometimes it can be quite irritating <laughs> in the way he speaks to you. But when you think about what he has said later on, you realize there is a lot of there is a lot of you know sense and truth and in what he's told you. And uh, you know, we would argue with Jacob the previous day, and uh, before, and I would wake up in the morning, going to the showers, and I was looking somewhere else. And this chap would behave like nothing happened. <laughs> and I would turn around and think, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> and I, was, <laughs> I would almost stop and say, you know, we, we're still not talking. <laughs> I'd almost go like that. But that's the kind of person Jacob was. So I, um, you know, through my friendship with Jacob, I've learned quite a lot of things. And I've learned to, you know, what friendship you know, can be. And you know what started as just a simple friendship between boys in the nursing school has turned out to be something much more. And I didn't realize it was, it was a long haul, <laughs> you know, kind of friendship that I was signing for from, 19, from that year in, when we met in the nursing school. And so we've been friends all this time and um, we've both raised families and our families our children know each other, and uh, he's just been there, you know. And I've tried as much as I could to be there for him. Jacob has always been an innovative person, and has always thought outside the box, you know. I remember in nursing school, Jacob loved reading. You know, reading not just the academic stuff and all that kind of thing. You know, most of us just went to the school library when there was an exam looming <laughs> by the corner. But almost every day when we came from either our placement or from the classes, Jacob would go to the library and he would be reading newspapers, he would be reading nursing times, and he just had this, you know, very inquisitive and, uh, you know, very very innovative mind and he questioned things and that showed even in the class sometimes during lectures uh, you know you would ask questions which you never thought about and you know that kind of thing so he's always been a very very innovative chap and i remember one time when i just moved to kalulushi because eventually um, i moved and uh, to kalulushi and uh, we stayed in the same location and uh, Somehow, I don't know, was, I think it, there was a program Dr. Manasseh was running in, in public health and uh, there was some health education they were doing. And for some reason, somehow, Jacob found his way into all this kind of thing. And <laughs> so there was this red, new radio station which has just been opened called Radio Chengelo. And the next time Jacob was, came to my home and he was telling me, now Rogers, there's this program we need, we have been asked to be presenting some health talks and some health tips. The program was called Women's World. And I thought he was joking. He said, no, that's serious. I want you to get involved and so on. So the next weekend, we found ourselves in the studio recording. For, <laughs> and uh, the weeks that followed, you know, we continued presenting that program on Radio Echengelo just in its infancy days. So such, was, such is the is Je su such is the way how innovative Jacob is and um, in, in everything that he tries to do he's always tried to pull me along you know every time there was an exciting an exci exciting opportunity he, he sort of pulled me along I remember once uh, when I just got married and um, my wife moved I was still living in Muflira because after we graduated from training I remained in Mufria, he went to Kaluloshi. And um, my wife couldn't find a job in Muflira, but there was a job in Kitwa and in Kaluloshi. So we were still trying to figure out how that is gonna work, whether she was gonna be commuting from Mufria. Then came Jacob on the scene. Um, we had gone for, we had gone for, for a, we, I think it was a nursing association meeting. We met and as we were chatting with Jacob, then he says, oh, why don't you just transfer to Kalulushi, to Nkana Division, because it's still the system. I said, no, but Jacob, you don't understand. 
the CCM is just being privatized and uh, you know, there's rooming rumors that this division will be handed over to another, you know, other proprietors and I don't think that's possible. So I say, no, you can move to Kalulush, you can, you can move to Nkana division where I work. And uh, before I realized, I went to, back to work, you know, the following week, I was getting phone calls from the chief nursing officer from Kalulush and she was asking me <laughs> when I was, gonna, I was prepared to move to Kalulush. <laughs> so I said, no, I haven't even put in my transfer letter and I don't think I'll be allowed to go because this division here is on its knees for nurses and I don't think they're going to let me off to you. She said, no, it's, he, she said, no, we've got a place for you, just go on and, and Jacob just said, and I wrote that transfer letter, took it in. At first they said, no, there's no way you're going to go. But in the end it was ac accepted and in the coming few weeks, we were on our way to Kalulushi. So that's how I found myself in Kalulushi, and the whole puzzle was solved. So that's such as is the way that Jacob has been, and such is the friend he's been to me and um, to my family. Um, his wisdom and maturity has become a very, has, has been very, very handy and helpful to me in critical times and in making critical decisions in my own life. Jacob is the husband of Gladys, and um, they have three children, beautiful children, two girls and a boy, whom they've already mentioned. Um, I remember when Jacob fell in love with Gladys. I think we were second year or somewhere there. I can't remember exactly. By then I was quite naive and I didn't want this thing about girlfriends and <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, I had a number of friends, you know, from the Christian fellowships, friends, ladies, and all that kind of thing. Now, Gladys was more like a sister to me because when we went to nursing school, we were put in these small groupings. Um, from first year, you were put, put in these groups of six. And um, whenever you went for a placement or doing anything else, you went in those groups. So from first year up to third year, we were put in this group. And that group composed of myself, Gladys Muvanga then, and um, let Mabel Chanda, God bless her heart, may her soul rest in peace. Then there was uh, Abigail Nachilembe. Then there was uh, Loveness Kaniki. Then there was Let Florence Peary. She, may her soul rest in peace. So now, during those groups, because everywhere we went, we were in these groups, and uh, I was like the man of the group. <laughs> and when we went for placement in surgery, we went to ophthalmology, we went to Kitwe, we went for psychiatry in Indola, we were in these groups. So I was sort of like, look after all these, uh, all, all my, you know, they were more, we became very bonded and we were like sisters. So when this chap now started talking about Gladys and I sort of felt like, I, I almost told him, you know, you know, Jacob could not stop talking about Gladys and, you know, he was head over heels about her and he would go on and go on and it, it, it got to a situation where I was starting to get agitated and annoyed about it. And I would tell him to stop talking about Gladys and I kept saying, can you stop it? Don't, don't, don't disrupt Gladys's. I sort of became protective. And <laughs> but knowing him and um, being a good friend, I, I, I later on learned that the, the chap was in love and these two were in love. So they became the love beds of the training school. And um, I'm sure some of our friends here, there's Lillian there, there's Carol, there's, um, I've seen Judy there, I've seen Jillian there, and yes, and some of these, this lot here, I've seen Stella there, I've seen Mabel here, they can attest to this relationship because this rela their relationship became well known in the, in the school, and uh, you know, they were not, they were like the lovebirds of the, of, of Mufra School of Nursing. 
And um, I thank God, whatever they started, you know, that time materialized to what we've all witnessed today. And uh, it just tells us about the goodness of God. To you, Jacob, on your fifth birthday, may I take time to just wish you a happy birthday and God's favor and divine health. And may you live to see your hundredth birthday. And God bless you. Thank you.